So last week we talked about the S word that sells stories, right? This week we're going to talk about the V word that great leaders use to keep their teams motivated. What is the V word? I know I got a text from Angela saying, is it victory? I love that. But the V word that great leaders use to keep their teams motivated is vision. Vision. The Bible says without vision, people perish. But isn't that true? When things get hard, when you're getting rejection, when, when, you're, you know, when you're not seeing results, you're like, why am I doing this? Why am I putting myself through this? <laughs> I would rather sit on the couch and watch Netflix and eat some popcorn and just binge watch and, and chill out, right? Why do I need to do these extra things? But that's why you want to paint a vision bigger than they can even imagine. So in the book of Haggai and in the book of Zechariah, it's when the Jews return to their homeland after the Babylon exile. They were exiled for 70 years, but the new king Cyrus allowed the Jews to return to their homeland and said, go rebuild the Jerusalem temple. But when they got there, they laid the foundation for the sanctuary and the work began, but soon hostile neighbor, neighbors tried to stop the work. Outward opposition accounted for only part of the problem. An inward enemy called indifference posed the major threat, indifference. Most of the workers became apathetic, even though the rebuilding project supplied the very reason for their return to Jerusalem. Um, so let me back up. So Haggai did a great job in coming and speaking to the people, speaking the vision over them of where they're going. And later in the book of Zechariah, he did the same thing. He said, the angel of the Lord gave this charge to Joshua that this is what the Lord Almighty says. If you will walk in my ways and keep my requirements, then you will govern in my house and have charge of my courts. And I will give you a place among these standing here. Listen to the priest Joshua and your associates seated before you who are men symbolic of things to come. I'm going to bring my servant to the branch. He's talking about Jesus. And I will remove the sin of this land in a single day. In that day, each of you will invite his neighbor to sit under his vine and fig tree, declares the Lord Almighty. Basically, I will take care of you if you follow my ways, if you follow my instructions, and you live in the ways that's instructed, you'll be living a fruitful life while everything and all of your needs are being taken care of, painting that vision. So there's a great book uh, by the last name Schwartz. It's called The Magic of Thinking Big. And Brian Carruthers, our mentor, always talks about how that motivated him. Brian Carruthers is a seven-figure earner. And you know what motivates him to keep moving forward? It's constantly thinking of, the bigger vision of, of what you can do. It's not, it's not making the money, but it's what the money can do to help the community and the people around you to be able to help more people um, beyond your family. So Brian Carruthers is now thinking in how to contribute to big projects and his churches and stuff like that, uh, because that's what seven figures can bring you. And instead of just six figures, which is taking care of the family and getting ahead personal, right? And people want to be around people who are going places. Have you guys seen the movie Licorice Pizza? I would have never watched this movie, but we were on our way to Hawaii for the Legal Shield incentive trip. And we were on the plane for five hours. And we're like, what's this about? So we started watching this. It looked like a silly kid teenage movie, but it's a really compelling movie about this young teenager who constantly had this vision of starting businesses and buying rental property and um, starting the first waterbed mattress company and all this kind of stuff. And everyone wanted to be around him. Like this guy was always talking about the future. He was always talking about where he was going and it, it was energizing, right? Because people want to be around people who can show them um, wh where the better life is. So there are three visions to paint as leaders. Number one, where the company is going. Number two, where you are going and number three where are they going the person that you're leading where are they going so let's start with number one 
you want to paint the vision of where the company is going. Legal Shield, for example, is going to be a household name. Just like life insurance hit a trillion dollar industry and health insurance became a trillion dollar industry and car insurance became a trillion dollar industry, legal insurance will also, it's inevitable before legal insurance becomes a trillion dollar industry. Hey, the alternative to our services is a $400 an hour lawyer. What would you rather pay $400 an hour or $29 a month? And so it's just inevitable that everyone's going to get it and become a household name. In fact, if you look at Teladoc, right? Who's ever used Teladoc? Have you used like your uh, telehealth thing where you could download an app and you can speak to a doctor or FaceTime a doctor and show FaceTime, hey, this is this funny bump I have on my skin. You know, what is that? Right. Or they could tell oh, I'm congested here, my throat or whatever. And then they prescribed you right over the phone. They send you a prescription right through the app. You could take that prescription down to your local CVS and get your medicine. And it was, you didn't have to go into the doctor's office. Well, it's just a matter of time, just like Teladoc is like tell a lawyer here with Legal Shield, right? I mean, getting a chance to speak to a lawyer anytime now through the app um, on your phone and scheduling that appointment anytime, it's just a matter of time before everyone gets it. So number one, paint the vision of where your company's going. You also want in conversations with the people that you're leading to paint the vision of where you are going. And that's easy because you get to just share your dreams, right? Uh, you know, I've always had a dream of being able to travel the world. I've always had a dream of one day when I became a mom, I'd be able to teach my children history from real life seeing the, the sites and the actual historical sites and taking them physically there, sharing your dreams. You can also share your lifestyle if it's improved as a result of being a part of the company that you're with, right? And so whether it's sharing, oh, you know, I, get, I got to go on my kid's um, uh, school trip today, whereas before when I was working the previous job or stuck at a job, I would have never been able to do that. Or, um, you know, sharing the little things like, hey, we're just getting back from a, a, a five-day trip, all expenses paid by the company. And I would have never been able to go on a vacation like this. I would have never spent my own money if I hadn't won a free trip for free. So getting a chance to share your lifestyle with people helps them see where they're going because you as the leader are usually one step ahead. And they need examples from you. Why? Because most people have stopped dreaming when they got into the real world. But as a leader, we need to turn on our dream machine. Lou Moya recently visited here in Southern California. He stayed at our house for five days and we took him, um, we basically did like a dream hike along these $20 million homes on the coast of Laguna Beach on the cliff overlooking the ocean and getting a chance for him to see like, okay, there's more, there's, there's so much more possibilities that are out there. I was just had a conversation with Elizabeth Gardner and she shared how she was able to write a check for $50,000 to her church for a project that they needed. And I'm like, okay, that's like, uh, eye-opening for me. I needed to hear that from her. She's at a whole other level, right? Going for a million dollars a year this year in her business. But I need to hear that from somebody because that opened my vision of the possibilities of how I can make a greater impact um, with my passion and my causes. So sharing where you are going, even if you're not there yet, even if you just got started and you you haven't had a life transforming change yet in your life, you can still share where you're going because everyone wants, enjoys that, right? Having that dream conversation, showing them the possibilities. But number three, we want to share where they are going. Where are they going? And this is the one that you wanna keep ministering and, and preaching words of encouragement. Because words of encouragement is like oxygen for the soul. You need to know their why so you can continue to remind them about their why. We need to know 
their heart? What truly is it that drives them? Are they really motivated to help people? They love their family so much that they want to be able to retire their spouse. Um, you know, they want to be able to pay off all their debts. They, they don't want to live in this financial pain anymore. They want to be able to give their kids a better life. They want to be able to travel the world. People are energized by a better picture of tomorrow. So when you can paint that for them and remind them of why they're doing this, um, it helps them get out of the immediate, right? It helps remind them of the ultimate of where they're going so they're not enslaved to the immediate. I remember my mentor years ago when I had first gotten married to Dave. Now, uh, when I first started this business, I was $40,000 in credit card debt, which you guys all know. But what you don't, what you don't know is I still had um, a good portion of my debt when I married Dave, when, when we got married. And so I was so embarrassed. I was still feeling financially stressed, even though I was making good income at the time. I was already six figures, but I had this huge debt that I was bringing into this relationship that I was truly ashamed of. I was embarrassed about it. I didn't want to be there anymore. And it was one of those months where I just had a slow and difficult month. And I remember crying to my mentor. I was literally crying to him saying, I just, you know, this isn't happening fast enough. I just feel really stressed out. I have more bills coming in than I have um, money coming in. And, and he said to me, and I was telling him how, you know, I'm, I'm marrying this guy and how I'm going to bring this into his world. And he said to me, he said, Liz, you are going to retire your husband someday. He said those words to me. Now, now that wasn't a goal that I had that it wasn't even something in my mind. It wasn't even an idea that I thought, right? I didn't even, I didn't even have that desire yet. I didn't know that, that was something that I could do. And he said to me, he spoke words of vision of my future. He said, you are going to retire your husband someday. The business that you're going to build is so big that no one in your family is going to have to work anymore. And you'll be able to provide for your children a life that you've never, a, a life where they don't have to struggle and worry, where they'll be able to go out and and immediately graduate from school and then start, invest, start starting business of their own instead of having to go get a job and work for someone else. And he spoke these words into my life. Little did I know that these things would actually happen and that all this would come true. So when you're speaking words of encouragement into their life, also speak words of possibilities into their life and paint things that they may have never even thought of or imagined. So I believe in every single one of you guys. I believe in you. You guys have pure, the purest hearts. You truly want to help people. You come from an amazing, caring, and good place. You deserve the best. God has huge plans that he has made for you. He's got bigger plans for you that you can ever imagine. You will retire your spouse. You will be so free that you'll just be able to wake up and have 10 months of bills prepaid for in advance. Heck, you'll have 10 years of bills pre prepaid for in advance. You don't need to worry when you go to the restaurant. You don't need to read the menu from the right to the left. You'll just be able to walk in and say, I feel like having a lobster and a filet mignon and Oh, by the way, the, those two tables over there, buy them too. <laughs> You'll be able to take the trips that you've always ever wanted to see while you're still here on this earth. You'll be able to impact the causes and the hurting people that are out there that you see out there, those things that really hurt your heart when you hear about things, the wrongs in this world, the unjust in this world, the things that you wish you could provide for to help. But, but, but right now you're trying to take care of your family, but you will be able to stroke a check one day to an organization or to a group of people that are needing your love, encouragement, and support. And it's going to be a surprise. They won't even know who it's coming from because you won't need the recognition. You just want them to have that gift and to truly live a better life. So I believe in you guys. I'm so proud of you, where you're going, what the work that you're doing here is so important. It's not just an opportunity to provide people with equal access to 
attorneys that they otherwise wouldn't have been able to afford. But it's also an opportunity to uh, set yourself up and your family's financial future forever. Set yourself up so you can help others and teach others how to do the same thing. And together, as one big team, we're going to impact the world and strike the biggest checks to help the biggest causes out there as a big group together. I love you guys.